All right, everyone. I have a return guest to my channel. I got Aaron Amin, who goes by the hybrid real estate professional or investor or hi hybrid professional, right? Hybrid professional. The hybrid real estate professional. Exactly. Professional, yes, yes. Okay, and I want to catch up because he has a lot of stuff going on right now. So I want Eric to fill you guys in on all this. Sure. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Yeah. So we we spoke in May, and it has been probably the busiest couple months of my life ever since then. So we found out my wife and I are expecting twins at the end of this year, and we already have a twenty-one month old daughter. So we're gonna have a busy household. Three kids under the age of three by the end of 2023. So as a result, we made a pretty big decision. We're going to uproot and move out of our home in central Washington state here down to Houston, Texas. And my dad and a, a lot of other family live down there. So the, a few different reasons, right? One is to be closer to a larger group of family as our, as our family is growing. And two is, you know, cost of living is significantly cheaper in Texas. So as a result of all this, this big decision, we looked across our whole real estate portfolio. You know, we owned nine houses, eight of which were rentals. And we wanted to see, you know, what makes sense to potentially sell? Can we hold all of them? Um, how can we financially make this big move work? We already had a young kid. We have a pretty, uh, unfortunately, large co collection of furniture and all a lot of uh, physical items. So we had to start looking. You know, what, do we sell everything and start over? Anyway, I'll skip all the the nitty gritty details. And essentially, what we decided was instead of selling our primary home that I'm sitting in right now, we sold our very first ever home that we bought in Las Vegas which used to be our primary home. Um, we've been holding it as a rental for the last three years. And through a beautiful tax, I don't even want to call it a loophole because it's just a regular rule. Through a, the, If you lived in a house as a primary residence for two out of the last five years, you can sell that house and you can exclude all of the capital gains. So we bought our primary home in 2017. We lived there for three years until 2020. And we were approaching the, the five-year mark. Uh, if we sold the house by September 12th of this year, we could exclude all the gains. So instead of selling our current house that I'm sitting in right now, we sold that one, but it had essentially the same effect. We were able to sell it and put quite a bit of cash in our pocket to get through the move. And um, so it was essentially doing a lot of thinking about, you know, how to reposition, if you will. I believe that's the formal word. Reposition our portfolio so we could afford a house in Houston. And now we were able to buy a house there that is almost twice the size of the one we're in right now for a fraction of the price. And so we're, you know, it's interesting. It, it was a very personal decision driven by completely personal factors where we want our family to live, proximity to my parents, uh, you know, what kind of lifestyle we want to be able to afford for ourselves. So it was a very personal decision, but it ended up involving all this, you know, analysis of our, our rental portfolio. So it was complex in that, in that sense, but it's a really interesting time you picked to call me because all of this just kind of settled down. It started about a week after the last time I talked to you and it's resolving the movers literally show up this Friday. Awesome. This is like my first time hearing all of this. So this is kind of catching me off guard. But I have so much things running through my head that I want to ask you. But I guess the first thing I want to kind of, well, I'm saying congratulations. But the, the first thing I want to know is, would all of this be possible? Like if you were stuck in a traditional W-2 job, or if you didn't have, you know, like extra income or rental income coming in from your portfolio to kind of make this smooth transition? Sure. Absolutely not. It would not be possible. <laughs> I'm very, very lucky in that sense. You know, by day, I work as a business manager for a management consulting firm. The company is based out of Seattle area, but there are offices in California, Texas, Illinois, 
Utah, uh, and the two Dakotas, funny enough. But essentially, they allow people to move and work remotely for any state that they're licensed to do business in. So thankfully, in this case, they have an office in Dallas. And even though I'm moving to Houston, I'm able to just align myself with the Dallas office uh, and set up on a on a Texas payroll, and there are no issues. So that's my job. My wife is also doing part-time contract work for her old employer from way back years ago when we used to live in Vegas. And that is also 100% portable, 100% remote, and her job's even flexible. She took a lot of time off when our daughter was born, so she hasn't been working full-time over the last uh, 21 months. And uh, to your point, you know the the rental income that we get from the eight rentals has definitely provided that flexibility so that we've been able to do these things without having to force her back into full-time work uh, or force me into maybe a different career path and pushing really far ahead to try and get a, a higher salary. We've been able to you know, pursue our goals that align with, with what we want for our lives. And um, yeah, the portability of the jobs is just such an amazing amazing thing that I don't know, you know, 10 years ago, if that was, that wasn't as common as it is now. So we're very lucky. Do you think, um, let, let's just say like your job, your W2 job didn't have an office in Dallas, but because of the cost of living is so much lower, you able to 1031 your Vegas property. Do you think you still may have moved without a job lined up for you? Like you could have made that move and then took your time to find a job there? You know, that's a really complex question because I am the primary W-2 employee in the house and I have benefits, health benefits tied to it. My wife's pregnant. I would say no, I would need to have a job lined up, but that's not to say I wouldn't look, right? I think we, we really laid all the cards out on the table. This was a really difficult decision. We have family up here as well. Uh, so there is a kind of personal, emotional reconciliation we had to do. Um, I've lived in Washington the majority of my life. So there are a lot of reasons for staying. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for going. And the job security made it easier. I think I would have actively pursued and applied for jobs. And uh, of course, had something lined up. Because we can't have a gap in insurance when my wife's pregnant. That, that, just, that part wasn't an option. I love it. I mean, I, I I think I've talked about it a few times on my channel. But so, you know, me and my son's mom, you know, we stood up. She She's from North Carolina. She always wanted to move back. And you know, I'm not saying things would have worked out, but me having a pension in the fire department, uh, you know, like you're saying, the medical, I was always like, I can't leave. You know, I have this pension where I got to work so many years to get my benefits and everything. But now that I look back, if I had, you know, a rental portfolio back that time or had this extra income coming in from a bit another job or business, you know, it would have made that transition a lot smoother and, you know, maybe things will be different now, but yeah, just looking back on it. And I think that's why it's such an important thing to, uh, you know, have extra income coming in, whether it's from a rental, you know, portfolio or a business that you start, but I'm, I'm happy for you, man. I, I'm excited to see where this takes you. And do you think it's going to, affect your writing now as far as your um what you're doing on on your what would they call it what, what platform is that again um so i have a newsletter on substack and i read substack, on twitter yeah. yeah yeah you think it's gonna slow down a little bit for you it's really funny you ask that because i have some pretty ambitious goals uh with my writing prior to the twins arriving so the twins are due in December, twins usually come a bit early. So I'm the marker I'm putting in the on the calendar is Thanksgiving. So between now and then, I know that my schedule is going to be more open than after that. So I've um I've come up with a couple goals. I want to create a free seven-day email course that encapsulates everything I've learned in my six years of doing this, how we got from zero all the way to eight. But not just my story, really the the journey and how people can apply it to themselves. And this is geared largely towards people who either haven't started yet or people that might own a primary home and want to figure out how to parlay that into a portfolio. 
So that's really who I'm targeting that for. And that's going to be completely free. I already have that outlined. So I really just need to dig in and, and write it, which will probably happen here next month once I'm on the ground in Houston. Uh, I use a lot of different scheduling apps and I actually have a virtual assistant that helps me. Uh, so where all I have to really do is write the content and they can help me put it across all the different platforms. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll just really, really focus on writing my weekly newsletter. And as long as I can produce that piece of content, it can be cut up and sliced up and distributed across, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. I opened a threads account just to, <laughs> to try and be an early adopter. And um, so, yeah, there's, I could go on a whole rabbit hole about some of the things I've learned about how to streamline that process. It's taken quite a while. I started writing on a daily basis in March of 2022. I joined a cohort program called Ship 30 for 30. It's a pretty popular one. Uh, and the whole purpose of that program is to get people started writing online. And it's very specifically online. It's, uh, you know, social media. Their whole thing is don't start your own blog. Like take advantage of the networks that are already out there. Twitter has however many hundred million users. LinkedIn, um, Medium is another platform they use, and then eventually starting your own newsletter. And the goal is to just build the habit, build the habit of writing online every day. And the 30 for 30 is you write 30 different 250 word atomic essays in 30 days. And they teach you how to come up with ideas. They teach you how to look at your analytics. And you know, after the first 10 days, you look at the things that we're most engaged with and you rewrite about those in different ways. And so going through that was pretty transformational and it showed me how you don't have to sit down with a blank page. Every time you want to write something, you can really continue to just expand on the same ideas over and over again. So that's, that's um very long winded answer to your question. I don't plan to slow down. Uh, if anything, I'm hoping to accomplish quite a bit on my, writer's roadmap before um before the twins come awesome well now you've given me our, our next topic that we can talk about after this and I, I love catching up and you know like i said this caught me all off guard but now you know i'm going to end this one right here and i hope everybody enjoyed it seeing the benefits of having you know a rental portfolio or you know passive income coming in so it can help you you know, transition to whatever things happen in life, you know, like you say, you know, you're having twins or, you know, some people, even for me, like is thinking about what I'm going to do when my parents get older, like, you know, how am I going to handle that situation? But we're going to end it. Hope everybody enjoys it. And we'll be right back with our next topic.